expand our imagination. Welcome to Washington Unplugged. I'm Jan Crawford. Congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes spoke earlier with five-term Republican Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. She got her thoughts on Republicans assuming control of the House and next week's battle over repealing health care reform. We'll then go to our political roundtable with CBSNews.com political reporter Stephanie Condon and then, of course, our senior political producer, Rob Hendon. But first, our Nancy Cordes asked Congresswoman Blyburn how it feels, what's it like just one day before Republicans officially take over the majority in the House. Take a look. When you think about the confidence the American people have placed in us, and my hope and prayer is that we live up to those expectations, that we meet the expectations that they have, and that we're able to move forward, take the actions they want taken. You have set one of your first votes for next Wednesday on repealing health care yes. reform. And you've said you'll continue to hold these votes throughout the term. Is there any concern that you might be making the same mistake that Democrats made, which is focusing too much on health care, and the American people are saying, we really want you to focus on jobs? What we're going to do is focus on the health care bill and the repeal of that. We have to do that because our constituents tell us this is a jobs killer. As their insurance costs are going up, as health care costs are going up, they are not able to hire. So they really are intertwined. They also want us to focus on reducing what the federal government spends, reducing the size of the federal government, and putting the American people back to work creating the environment for jobs growth to take place. Of course, Democrats are already saying, if you repeal health care reform, you're going to eliminate all these popular new provisions, things like extending health insurance to uh, children who are up to 26 years old, they could stay on their parents' insurance, to expanding drug coverage to another 3.4 million seniors. How do you respond to that? What they're doing is picking out a couple of provisions where there was agreement on moving forward. You know, when you completely repeal a bill, then you replace a bill. And what we're going to do is to replace that bill with something that is going to be uh, more focused on the doctor-patient relationship, more business-friendly for employers and employees. There is a different way to do this, a right way and a wrong way. We're going to go back and we're going to do it the right way. One element of the new rules package that you've put forward is getting some scrutiny, and that has to do with giving your new budget committee chairman, Paul Ryan, unfettered ability to set budget levels without a vote in the House. Congressional watchers say that this is unprecedented. Why would you give him that kind of unfettered power? Isn't that undemocratic? What you're going to see is emphasis on what authorizers put in place as well as what appropriators put in place. Because so many times authorizing uh, legislation will say as much money as this may consume. What we're saying is, you know, let's move in and let's begin to put some caps in place so that we begin to cut back on that spending. Another way of approaching this will be looking at agencies in that budget process and saying, give us those across the board spending reductions. You know, every year I've won, run one, two, and five percent across the board spending reduction bills. And my colleagues this year are saying, hey, Marsha, run those bills, but this year run them at five, ten, and fifteen percent across the board spending reductions. Okay, but why not allow all your members to vote on that? Didn't you run on greater transparency? And you're going to see greater transparency. You're going to see bills available 72 hours before they go forward. You're going to see bills But just not come when it comes forward. to the budget? No, you're going to see participation in the budget from the ground up, from the first day up. You're going to see us hold hearings, oversight into what is going to take place and what is going to go into that budget. And then you're going to see the budget committee work very diligently to put some caps in place and the appropriators to come in under those caps. It will be a very transparent, open, and teamwork process. When Newt Gingrich took over the speakership in 1994, he threw parties. There was this 100-hour push. Speaker Boehner is taking a very different approach, isn't he? He is indeed. I think we all know that this is a very sobering time. 
and uh, we have lots of constituents who are out of work. Constituents who are looking for jobs, actively looking for jobs. They want us to get to work. They want us to tend to the business at hand. It is government's job to create the environment in which jobs growth can take place. They want us to roll back regulation. They want us to roll back levels of taxes. They want us to reduce what the federal government spends and get jobs growth as the focus. And that's what we're going to do. There's such an enormous contingent of freshman Republicans coming into the House, uh, and they're going to have an unprecedented amount of power. Are you concerned, as someone who does have a lot of seniority with five terms here in Congress, that they'll actually end up taking some power away from more senior members? Not at all. It is a breath of fresh air, and I, I am so excited that they are here because they are bringing an energy and a focus which is good. Their arrival has been very good. We welcome them. We're looking forward to working with them, bringing that energy. And how wonderful it is now that politics is working from the grassroots up and the energy and the ideas that are being brought to bear in our listening sessions, in our town hall meetings, through these campaigns. That is just exactly what Washington has been needing. How do you make deep cuts in things like education or law enforcement without facing a big backlash from voters who have come to rely on these things. There's a lot of probably waste as you look at the bureaucracy in uh, the number of employees in the federal government, the number of duplications that you have in programs, redundancies, those are areas where you go first. It's a snowball effect. You start with the things that are most obvious and you work through that and then you begin to place priorities into what government ought to do. That is why you're going to see us hold hearings on rules and regulations that have more than a $100 million impact on the economy. It is also why you're going to see us hold hearings on rules and regulations, areas that agencies shouldn't be getting into where they really have no authority. Joining me with Reaction Now and the news that's driving the day here in Washington are Stephanie Condon and Rob Hendon. Let's just start with you, Stephanie. We just saw Congresswoman Blackburn say the first order of business, of course, is to try to repeal the health care law and that that will go over with voters because that's about jobs, too. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make it, you know, that this is not just about health care, but it's a job killer bill. Is that going to fly? I mean, are people going to uh, buy that? Well, I think it's a tricky task. I mean, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is the health care law uh, hasn't affected too many people yet. The biggest parts of the reform haven't even gone into place. But the ones that have gone into place uh, are really popular ones, uh, like closing the Medicare uh, coverage gap called the donut hole. So uh, re repealing those things uh, may not be too popular, but um, I think that they want to get this out of the way to appease uh, their base, the Tea Party, as uh, Congresswoman Blackburn said, you know, she called uh, the new uh, freshman class a breath of fresh air. And I think it shows that Republicans are really uh, willing to embrace their base. Um, I think kind of more than Democrats were. They, I think Democrat, the, their legislation in the past year um, had kind of a broader, more moderate appeal. And uh, I think Republicans are showing they're unafraid to really listen to their core supporters. Now, obviously, Rob, I mean, the health care legislation was considered uh, the president's most defining accomplishment. Uh, Stephanie's talking about the Republican base. How hard are Democrats now going to have to fight uh, to defend this bill to appease their base and to also, I think, preserve maybe going into 2012 President Obama's accomplishments? Well, I think a lot. I think a lot of the Democrats during the initial health care debate felt that they weren't able to really tell the American people to look what's in the bill. They, they, the bill got bogged down by process, by the big spending numbers, by Obamacare and the, the misnomers. So the Democrats, I think, are actually looking forward to the chance to refight the battle. This they're looking forward to they're it. They're like, bring it on. It. Yeah, bring it on. This this bill in the House isn't going to go anywhere because the Democrats still control the Senate. Obviously, the right. president yeah, is still there. Yeah, there's zero. Yeah, we should say that right now. This is all in the House. There's obviously yeah, zero chance. But they're chance really looking forward to it. And you, you talked about jobs. There's a press release here that some of the members of the House members, the Democrats, have already put out saying, repealing, this is a quote, repealing the health care law will increase the deficit, kill jobs, increase taxes. So it's a jobs argument on both sides. And they talk about certainty and creating an environment for certainty for business. The Democrats say, well, 
the law is in place, let it take effect, that's certainty. To repeal it and try to find some alternative, that's going to create even more uncertainty in the business community. So the jobs argument cuts both ways. But is this a, you know, kind of right out of the gate here, like, like you said and, and the Congresswoman has said, the new freshman class coming in, breath of fresh air, uh, you know, kind of trying to portray it as this new day in Washington where people are sensitive to uh, the concerns out there in the heartland and people who are struggling. Um, uh, why do you think, I mean, what's the politics of doing this health care bill first? Is it just get it out of the way and then we can move on or make a big statement? What do, what, how do you analyze the politics of it, Stephanie? Um, yeah, I think they are trying to make a statement. Uh, there are a lot of their uh, first acts in Congress will be kind of symbolic, like reading the Constitution aloud, and uh, they've instituted new rules, like uh, requiring citations and legislation that refers to the Constitution. And we, we heard the Congressman refer to that at the very end of Nancy's interview, mm -hmm. some of the changes that have to show how they're being guided by the Constitution. Right. and. So I think, um, you know, it's a nod of recognition to the influence the Tea Party has had with the party, but I'm not really sure if it can go beyond that. If anything, I think it could backfire. As Rob pointed out, you know, there, this gives Democrats a way to really point out a lot of, you know, the flaws with their case. But at the same time, what Stephanie said earlier is important that the, Dem the Republicans want to get this out of the way. And you heard Congressman Blackburn say that they're going to try to replace this bill. Right. That's going to be a very long process. And Republicans don't want to get bogged down in the battle over health care again. They weren't sent here to have the same battle that the Democrats took, uh, you know, 10 months plus to get this bill done. So they want to get out of the way. You heard also about Blackburn say expectations of the voters. That's their base, exactly what Stephanie's talking about. They want to get this out of the way, say, listen, we've repealed health care, we tried, we're not we're not be able to do it and move on and get into the budget cutting things and really say they made the statement and move on. Well, you know, um, Nancy also asked Congresswoman Blackburn about how uh, Speaker Boehner is having a different approach than, say, Newt Gingrich did uh, when he came in with great fanfare, mm -hmm. through a bunch of parties, uh, was pretty aggressive. Uh, meanwhile, Speaker Boehner is taking, I think, a, certainly a more low-key approach. What do you expect, and, and based on some of what we heard uh, in this interview, what do we expect on the Hill in terms of uh, investigations and oversight? How do we think Speaker Boehner will have a different approach? And, and what will that mean in terms of, uh, you know, how some of his committee chairmen are going to respond, like, like Daryl Issa, who's heading up that oversight committee? Stephanie, you want to take a crack at that? Sure. I mean, I think they're really going to, um, you know, keep their head down and try and get some serious work done to a certain degree. Um, uh, Issa has a slew of hearings. Uh, that he's uh, put on his agenda, uh, far-reaching, everything from uh, looking into corruption in the war in Afghanistan to the administration's response to WikiLeaks. Uh, Medicare. Medicare. Yeah. Um, I mean, if it's something you can criticize the administration for, it's probably on his list. But it doesn't sound, Rob, I mean, it doesn't sound that Boehner's really wanting, uh, as these committee chairmen, to actually start you know, issuing slews of subpoenas yep. and investigating administration officials. You're right. This is going to be the very, the very difficult task that Speaker Boehner has starting tomorrow, is to keep the agenda of moving forward on creating jobs and keeping it look like the Republicans are trying to work for the American people and not looking back and trying to go through the recriminations of the Obama administration. And that's there's a lot of anger in the Republican base, and they want someone like a Daryl Issa to say, okay, let's look at the Joe Sestak payoff. Let's look at the politics. Let's look at some of the deals that were done. Let's look at some of the Obama, like the stimulus plan and the spending. But Boehner's going to have to say to them, okay, we'll do this a little bit, but it's got to be under the guise of moving forward and not, as he said, not a political witch hunt. Right. And, and then, of course, um, we're having new people coming into the White House, uh, new mm -hmm. staff, new aides who he'll, he'll be dealing with, no more Rahm Emanuel. Uh, let's look down at the other end. We just got a, a brief moment. The other end is uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. The White House. Uh, right. We've got uh, Ron Klain leaving as vice mm -hmm. president by his chief of staff today. Rumors, and you've confirmed, uh, Bill Daley, Commerce Secretary, may be going in to replace yeah, former the Commerce president's Secretary. chief of staff, yeah, Rahm Emanuel. The, the, the what Commerce Secretary under uh, Bill Clinton, an old Democrat hand, he was the chairman of the Gore 2000 campaign and was, some say, responsible for the Florida recount, a moderate, a fighter, and uh, with really strong ties to the business community. And it, so the, what's happening in the White House right now is the senior advisor, David Axelrod, is heading to Chicago soon to work on the president's reelection campaign. There's some talk about some other shifts there. And then, and with Rahm gone, now running for mayor of Chicago, the chief of staff job is open, currently held by interim Pete Rouse. He's and he doesn't really, he really want doesn't the permanent really want job. It. He's not a public person. He's very much inside 
the Bellway, very much inside the West Wing kind of guy. Keeps do, you the see Bill, running. do you see Bill Daly working uh, uh, with, with Boehner and, and people up on the Hill like Rahm was brought in to do, Rahm Emanuel, or mm -hmm. is he more, I'm a great, you know, he's the business guy and the economy is the issue here? Well, or I is think, he going to do both? Well, you know, assuming, assuming he's, he's the, the <laughs> I think. I, <laughs> Let's not get too far yeah, ahead of ourselves. It's just, he is under consideration. I think what you could see from a guy like Bill Daly is that you reach out to the business community. He's on a, a bunch of large corporation boards. He's got a good relationship there. And that's what the president needs. He needs the relationship with the business community to see what the executive branch can do to help them spur hiring, to keep the economy going. Because if Obama can really turn this economy around with working with business to do so, he's almost guaranteed of a really good year going into 2012. And that's very important. And honestly, they got so much done with the Democrats running in the first half of the, his term in Congress that there's not a lot he really needs to get done legislatively in the next two years to win re-election. It's really about the economy. It's the economy, the economy. And he may just economy. say that, he, right. a guy like Daly says, we don't need to work with the Republicans so much as we need to work with Boeing and McDonald's and the, the big companies to say, let's get people hiring. All right. Well, Stephanie, Rob, thanks very much. And thanks for watching Washington Unplugged. Join us again tomorrow at 1230 on CBSNews.com. I'm Jan Crawford. Have a great day.